This video is brought to you by the Ridge Wallet. Guys, this incredible wallet is light, sleek, and industrial. And by the way, it doesn't fold or awkwardly bulge out of your back pocket. It seriously changed my whole pocket game. If you've moved on from the flip phone, it's time to let that 90 style wallet that your dad still uses behind. Ridge wallets, hold to 12 cards, plus all the cash that you need. You can choose from over 30 colors and styles, including carbon fiber and burnt titanium. It is the best wallet you can buy. You don't just have to take my word for it because there's over 30,000 five-star reviews. I was skeptical at first, but once I tried it, I will never go back and neither will you. There's no pressure. Test it out for 45 days. If you don't love it, send it back, full refund. When you decide to keep it, there's a lifetime warranty. Click the link in the description to get 10% off today with free worldwide shipping and returns. Go to ridge.com slash chael. That's ridge, R-I-D-G-E dot com slash chael and use the promo code chael. Jeremy Stevens was weighing in on Jake Paul versus Tyron Woodley. And by the way, guys, whether the fun on this has started or not, or you want to resist it, quit trying to resist it. It's going to be fun. Let's just call it for what it is, all right? There's some, when Paul fights, it's fun. There's something there, for sure. And Tyron is taking a risk, which is fun. So sit back and enjoy this. Quit being dicks about it, because you're not being a jerk to Jake, who you want to call a YouTube star, right? You want to say, that's supposed to be an insult. Lawyers do this with each other. You have a lawyer, and then you have a trial attorney, right? But somewhere there's like, you get lost in it. It's supposed to be an insult. Either they got a degree in Judas Prudence. Nice job teasing them. The guy's a success, whether it came from parking cars in a swimming pool on YouTube or not, he made it and he's fun. Jeremy Stevens was weighing in on this. He said, man, there's a chance that Jake knocks Tyron out. And he finished the thought by saying, talk about Jake Paul. He's a freak athlete. Well, I'm seeing some of that too. I am seeing some stuff, and it goes back to the Nate Robinson fight. I didn't see a whole lot in the Ben Askren fight. I saw that he had a power. I saw that he could deal with some nerves. They were in the locker room for a meaningful period of time with all sorts of shenanigans going on in the main room. He dealt with it. Whether you observed that or not, or thought that that was a bonus or a takeaway, it is. When you're in the back and you're about to fight Ben Askren, who only two men have ever got the jump on, and you can deal with that for six and a half hours while Bieber is out in the auditorium singing to a crowd of nobody. I mean, right, the whole thing's just weird. He dealt with it anyway. The Nate Robinson fight, though, I was able to see skill. I understand that Nate didn't fully know how to box. That isn't the point. Jake did. And the thing that I could see with Jake that I took away was his feints. As simple as, simple as that looks, when he was doing feints, he kept those, it takes a lot of energy. Believe it or not, it takes a lot of energy, takes timing. But it takes a ton of practice to learn how to faint a guy, to learn how to flinch a guy, get a reaction and come and attack. He was doing this to Robinson. And while he was having his way with Nate, Jake didn't know he was going to have his way. He didn't know those shots were going to land. And he went out and he set them up appropriately. So I am also seeing some major skill. It's hard for me to accept, no matter how much you love boxing, in this short of a period of time, even if you win in the maximum amount of time, which is twice a day, every single day with taking Sunday off, and he's at that age where his body could hold up and he could do that, even if you were doing that, I have a hard time believing you could close the gap on somebody of T. Wood's caliber. Doesn't mean he can't do it. I didn't think he could do it against Ben. And when you do listen to what Jeremy Stevens said, that he's a freak athlete, he might be. I mean, he might, I have to include the word might. I can't say for sure he's not. And I haven't seen enough to tip my hat to him quite that far yet. He might be a freak athlete. He's got a rare power. You know, knocking out a person is very hard to do, particularly when that person knows the rules, all right? It's not like they, these guys were in a department store. One guy's trying on slacks and the other guy comes up and blasts him. Knocking somebody out who knows the rules who, by the way, has big gloves on. All they got to do is put their chin down and it'll, it'll let them survive some moments. You got to flinch them. You got to fake them. You got to get a reaction to get those hands away from the chin, come up over the top. And there's a lot of moving parts there. I can remember when I first started hit a heavy bag and I was just a little kid. I was nine and 10 years old. I used to watch Sugar Ray. I used to watch Iron Mike. I had a black pair of underwear 
and I had black socks. I didn't have I didn't have trunks or boots, but that's what Mike used to wear to the ring. Mike used to come out in black shorts and black boots. So I put on my black socks and my black underwear and I'd go in the living room and I'd be boxing around. I'd have nothing but a towel over my neck. Mike Tyson never wore a robe to the ring. He cut a hole in a towel and stuck it on. His opponent would come out in a $20,000 robe. Champion never did. So I would do these things. I'd be in my living room by myself, but you know, I had my own little fantasies. My father would catch me and he'd sit and watch and told me how good I looked, but I needed to you know, get, give me some adjustments. Little kid. But I share this with you because when I first started hitting a heavy bag, I realized at nine years old, I'm tougher than Mike Tyson. I realized at nine years old, I naturally had stronger hands than Sugar Ray Leonard, the guys I looked up to. Now, the reason I knew that is I watched those guys hit the heavy bag on TV and they always had to wrap their hands up and they even had to put gloves on. I didn't have to do any of that. I go right in there, bare knuckle, bop, bop. I do the same thing they were doing. I was tougher than they were. Well, now I turn 14 and 15 years old and I start to actually get into this a little bit and I start to get a trainer and a coach. I could never hit a heavy bag without wraps on. The reason I could get away with it at nine years old because I was hitting it about this hard. I didn't know what I was doing. So it wasn't that my hands were stronger or I was better than Mike and, and Leonard together. So I didn't know what I was doing. I would never in a million years hit a heavy bag without wrapping my hand very well and putting gloves on. Hold the thought. I'm just saying, you know, the way your mind can play tricks on you. Clayton Hires, my trainer, got three boys. One of the boys, and I believe it was teeny, I believe it was his oldest, but one of the boys, they're sitting on the couch, they're watching boxing. He had done this many times when they watched boxing. The son, tell Clayton, tell his dad how easy this was, how he could do it, how they, it's not as impressive and it doesn't require as much work as you think. Now, I understand where teeny's coming from because I used to think I hit harder than Mike Tyson when I was in the fourth grade all because of this glove and hand debate, right? So Clayton finally had enough of it. He tells his son, you understand this is three minutes a round, right? You understand there's 12 rounds. He gets him to commit to all these different things. You understand there's somebody trying to hit you back. You understand the world's watching. He gets Teeny to commit to all these different things. He says, all right, son, stand up. I want you to throw as many punches as you can at the air with your feet planted, but you're going to do it for 30 seconds. So Teeny pops up and Clayton sets a watch and says, go 30 seconds later, Teeny had changed his mind completely. He said, pops, I am sorry. He was exhausted. He barely got all these punches out in 30 seconds. He could barely even do it. It was one of these things where until you try it, and I think we're all guilty to some regard, right? You watch gymnastics on TV the one time a year it's on, which are the Olympic trials or the world championships or the NCAA championships. You don't realize how hard that stuff is until you try to go upside down on your hands and land keeping your feet together. Right? It's just one of those things that you can see on TV and you can come to one conclusion, but then when you get out there to do it, it's a total nether. And I only bring that to you. I fought 50 men. I got one knockout. And I will tell you as the guy with the knockout, he wasn't out. The guy that I, one guy on my record, they call the knock. He was not out. It just got called a knockout. Knocking somebody out is very hard to do. Very, very hard to do. You have to have a natural power. You can improve your power in the gym, but you have to be somebody who may, waves the magic wand over us as human beings has to choose that you have power. You then also have got to have guts. You got to believe in your conditioning. You got to believe in your skills. And the only way you're going to get there isn't through being delusional. It's from accomplishing certain feats in the room that apparently Jake Paul is accomplishing. This whole act of being confident and he'll box anybody. The gig is up when you step in there with Ben Askren, who had two world championships and made an Olympic team. The gig is up when you step in there with Tyron Woodley, who is going to go into the Hall of Fame someday. It's real. Is he as good as he thinks he is? That's between those boys. But that's what this is about. This is no longer about a show. This is no longer about entertainment. This is no longer about some prick with an audience that steps into a sport that he doesn't belong. Those days are gone. You got to let that go. And if you can't let that go, not only are you being unfair to Jake, you're not going to enjoy it. We have the right to enjoy it. If we're fans that transfers over to customers and we're going to give up our time and we're going to part with a few bucks, we have the right to enjoy it. Guys, don't get in your own way on this one. This is fun. And when you start having guys like Jeremy Stevens, who has the right to his opinion, come out and vouch for what he's seeing in Jake Paul, 
against the former world champion in T Wood. There's something here. There's something here. Think what you want about it. I'm just encouraging you. Don't have this mental block. A lot of the questions around Jake are already answered. Whether you liked him or not, he passed the test. We're now down to, is he as good as he thinks he is? Between those boys, a little bit of time, a little bit of space. That time and space are going away.